So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to take an existing model and create various scenes, like an exploded view, a view of all the parts and pieces, and then individual scenes for every single part along with the dimensions. Now, you can follow along with uh, the example model uh, if you go to mastersketchup.com forward slash medicine cabinet, this is actually a continuation video on a series I did on how to actually build this cabinet. So you can follow along with that model or if you have a model of your own that you want to use, you can use that as well. So let's go ahead and get started. Hey, I'm Matt from mastersketchup.com, author of SketchUp to Layout and co-author of SketchUp and Layout for Architecture. So if you wanna learn how to model this actual medicine cabinet, I have a five part tutorial series uh, that you can follow to get to uh, this point here. Now this looks a little bit different just because uh, I've added some color to the model, uh, which we'll talk about in a little bit. But before we jump into exactly how to set up all of these scenes, I wanna just make sure I explain what it is you're looking at here. And just a reminder, this is the free version of SketchUp on the web. It's called SketchUp Free, and you can get to it by going to app.sketchup.com and just creating a free account. Okay, so there are two main concepts that you're gonna learn in this video. The first one is scenes. So in SketchUp Free, you can access scenes by going to this uh, views panel right here. And what scenes do is they allow you to save a number of different properties. So things like camera location, hidden geometry, visible layers, and other things. Now, you can have as many scenes as you want in the model, and it basically just allows you to jump to those views and those configurations really quickly you know, by just clicking on those scenes instead of having to reconfigure all of those individual settings uh, one by one. The second thing that you're gonna learn about in this video are layers. And layers work a little bit differently than probably what you're used to in other programs. So if you go to this tab right here, this will open the layers panel. So you need to think of layers as visibility tags that you assign to objects in order to control the visibility of them. So you can assign a number of different objects to a single layer, and now you can just toggle that layer on and off in order to turn the visibility of those objects on or off. So as you can see in this model, in the assembled scene, I have the only layer that's visible is the assembled layer. And then I also have layer zero on. This is the default layer. So if you followed the previous tutorials, this is the layer that everything is on. And really you wanna make sure like all of your base uh, entities, all your edges and faces, they always should be on layer zero and then you would assign your groups and components to layers, which we're gonna get into. Now, if we look at the exploded scene that I created and then look back up at the layers, we can see that assembled is off and exploded is on. So if I just zoom out a little bit here and toggle this layer on manually, you can kind of start to see how this whole model is put together. So if I turn on this one as well, we can see um, some additional geometry over here. So basically what I did is I just copied the original uh, cabinet and then assigned them to their own unique layer. That way we could control the visibility of them individually. And then I just you know, moved all of the individual parts and pieces of um, each copy in order to get the exact arrangement that I wanted to show. All right, so now that you understand kind of an overview of how this model is set up, let's go ahead and jump in step by step. So you'll need to use uh, this model here, or if you have your own model that you wanna uh, try this method with, that's perfectly fine too. So this is where we left off with the last video. And one thing that we would need to do before we start making copies of this cabinet is there are a few groups in here that we need to convert to components. Now, originally we didn't create them as components because each of the parts were unique. So there was really no reason to have them set up as components. But now that we are going to be copying this entire cabinet multiple times, 
we need to make sure that everything is a component. That way, if we do have to go and make changes, um, those changes are going to be propagated throughout all of those copies. So the way you can tell if you have a component or a group is to open up the entity info uh, panel. And when you select an object, it'll tell you if it's a group or component. So if I select this side piece, it says it's a component. If I select this back piece, it's a solid group. So to convert it into a component, you just wanna right click on the group and select make component. And now you can type in a, uh, a new name for that. Now, SketchUp Free works a little bit differently than the desktop versions of SketchUp. If I remember correctly, the desktop version literally converts it from a group to a component. But in the web-based version, it actually nests the original group inside the new component you created. So you might want to jump inside the new component you created and then just right click on the group that's nested inside of it and select explode. So I'm going to just run through and convert the rest of these two components. So now that we have everything converted to a component, um, maybe the last thing we would want to do is rotate this closed. So we can just click on this with the select tool, tap Q for the rotate tool, and then hover over the, the point here, and then click and drag upward until we snap to the blue axis. And then we want to snap to this edge here, and then we can rotate that closed and click to finish. All right, so the next step is to make the copies of this cabinet that we can then assign to the, uh, the layers that we want so we have visibility control over them. So before we do that, we could just click and drag to select all of these individual entities. It might be a better idea to turn this into a group. That way we can move it all as one assembly. So. I'm going to just click and drag over the all of those entities there, right click and make group. Now we definitely want this to be a group and not a component because we're going to be making changes inside of each individual group because we want it to look different than the other one. So we definitely want it to be a group um, because if it was a component, if we made a change to one, that change would be copied throughout all of them. All right, so now that we have the group created, we're gonna make the copies by activating the move tool. So we can tap M for move tool or grab it right here. And we'll click once to start, tap control to indicate that we want a copy and click to place the copy. So I'm gonna place this five feet and we're gonna make two copies. So we're gonna type in two X, enter, and that makes two copies of the cabinet. So now that we have the copies created, we now need to create the layers that we're gonna assign to these uh, different cabinets. That way we can control the visibility of each one individually. So we wanna open the layers panel right here. And layer zero is the default layer. Uh, that's what everything right now is currently residing on. And you really wanna make sure you keep all of your loose entities your edges and faces all on layer zero, and you really only wanna assign uh, layers to groups and components. There's a real important uh, uh, structural reason for why we do that, which I'm not gonna get into um, in this video, but that's really important. But to create a new layer, we're gonna just click the add layer button, and we'll rename this to assembled. So that's gonna be the first layer, and then we're just gonna repeat that process. So this one will be exploded, and this one will be lumber. That'll be the one we assign to um, all the, the pieces laid flat on a single plane. And then the last one is gonna be dimensions. That way we can control the visibility of dimensions independently from all of the different cabinet components. So another side note is you wanna to try to remember to create all of your layers before you create scenes because 
if you add a layer after a scene is already created, that layer will automatically be visible in every single existing scene, which isn't the end of the world. You can always go back to a scene and update it. It's just gonna make it a lot easier if you have those um, layers already created ahead of time. All right, so now we need to assign uh, each of these groups to its appropriate layer. So let's click on the first one here and expand the entity info panel and this will tell you what current layer uh, the group is assigned to. So by default it's on the active layer which is layer zero. We just want to click on that and then select the new layer that we want it to be assigned to. So we're going to add it to the assembled layer so we can see the layer assignment has been updated and we can confirm by clicking on this eye icon that uh, the group does indeed disappear when we hide that layer. So the really cool relationship between layers and groups and components is that any entity that is nested inside of a group or component that is assigned to any certain layer, um, all of those nested entities will respond uh, to that layer even though they aren't individually assigned to that layer. So basically like nested entities will inherit the layer assignments of their parent groups and components. So that's something to keep in mind as you're organizing your model and um, you know basically since we created a group out of all of these entities we don't have to go inside of that um, you know and select every single part and piece of the cabinet to assign to this layer we can just select the parent group and assign that one group to the layer so it just makes things a lot easier to manage so let's continue on and we'll assign this one to the exploded layer and then this one will be assigned to the lumber layer and we can go ahead and Oops, I've got a light up here and the gel just, it's like a really cheap gel so I have to tape it onto the light. Okay. All right, where were we? All right, so if we go down to the layers panel and you know turn these on and off, we can confirm that our uh, layer assignments are actually working and are assigned correctly. All right, so now that we have our layers assigned properly to the individual groups, we can go ahead and start creating our scenes. So the first one's gonna be really easy. Uh, we just wanna isolate this first group, which we know is on the assembled layer. So we're just gonna turn off every other layer uh, we, even though we don't have anything on the dimensions layer, we want to make sure it's turned off because eventually we will have um, things on that layer and we don't want them visible in this scene. So we're going to go ahead and configure everything as we want it. So this is the only layer that's visible, again, aside from layer zero, which is always going to be visible. And then what we're going to do is just use our mouse wheel and orbit tool to kind of get the view that we want. And then we're going to go to the views panel right here. Now, uh, the views panel gives you some default um, views <laughs> to set. Uh, so it basically, you know, gives you a top view, front view, things like that. But kind of hidden under here um, is where all of your scenes will be and also where you can add and edit scenes. So we're just gonna, um, again, configure this how we want. We'll click the plus sign to add a new scene and we can rename this assembled and that's it. That's all it is. So now like if you move the camera somewhere else, you can always click on that scene to go back to it. Now you'll notice by default um, there's like an animation thing that will you know take a few seconds to animate the camera back to position. I prefer personally to turn that off. So if you click on the settings and uh, disable enable scene transitions, that will turn that off. Um, that way it just instantly um, snaps back to that view. So that's personally my uh, preference, but you can leave that on if you if you like having that. All right, so for the exploded views, we need to go back up to our layers. We're gonna turn off assembled. We're gonna turn on exploded. 
And let's go ahead and jump inside of this group. So we're gonna uh, double click to jump inside of this group. And it's literally just manually moving all of these parts and pieces. There's really no magic to it. Um, so we're just gonna select, I'll select this door assembly. I'll tap M for the move tool and I will click once. I like using the arrow keys to lock the axis. So in this case, I'm going along the green axis. I'll just tap the left arrow key and that'll uh, make it a little bit easier for me. So I'm gonna move this uh, two feet forward. I'll select this one and I'll move this on the red axis uh, one foot and I'll just continue going through uh, selecting one thing at a time and just moving it where I want it. All right, so that looks pretty good. So now I'll just click outside to close that group and get my camera to the basic position uh, that I want the scene to save as. And once I have that where I want, we're gonna just scroll right back down to the views panel and we're gonna click the plus sign and that's gonna add our second scene. So we can rename this one to exploded and press enter. So now that we have two scenes, we could jump back and forth between each one. So when we click on the exploded scene, you'll notice that the uh, layer exploded is visible. Everything else is hidden. And when we click on assembled, assembled is visible and everything else is hidden. All right, so for the last scene, we're gonna go ahead and turn on the lumber layer. So this is our last group. And before we actually move all these parts and pieces around, one thing I like to do um, in this type of project is assign a material to the components. Uh, that way each component has a unique color to it. So it just helps visually uh, identify identical parts. So to do that, I'm just gonna double click to jump inside of each component and then I'm gonna triple click to select all of the edges and faces. And then with the letter B for the paint bucket tool, which you could also find over here, I'm just gonna click the browse button and click on colors. And I'm just gonna select a random color for each one. Now, you wanna make sure that you are actually jumping inside of the component um, that you're trying to paint because if you color the outside of the component, it's not going to um, affect the other one. So for instance, if I go and jump inside of this door and I have two copies of the same component here, right? But if I grab the paint bucket tool and let's say grab this yellow, if I paint this one, this one doesn't become affected because I'm not actually inside the component. So if I undo that and jump inside this component and then triple click, and then paint it, uh, let me grab that again. Then you can see the other side gets painted as well. So that's just a, an important distinction to understand with components. So this is going to actually affect all of the uh, copies of this cabinet as well. So just keep that in mind. And then I'll move this door out of the way so I can get to these, these ones in here. All right, so now that I have all of the components painted, I'll go ahead and use the move tool and rotate tool to just go through everything and move it all so it's just on a single plane. So I'll just continue going through the model and you know grabbing all of the different things that are similar to each other and rotating them down to a flat plane. Now one thing you could do is arrange it like this where you're trying to arrange the parts and pieces to uh, full size lumber that you're gonna purchase. And you can use the tape measure tool uh, with the letter T or right there. And you know you can measure what all these pieces uh, come out to. So this, I know I could get an eight foot piece. Um, I can measure this. So I know this could be a one by four by eight foot. Now, if you wanted to take this a step further, you could actually create the um, rough lumber uh, as objects that you would maybe overlay on top of these parts and pieces, 
control them with a separate layer. That way you could, you know, create a scene where you're just seeing the, uh, the raw lumber that you need for the project. Um, I personally didn't go that far with this project. I just uh, had everything kind of aligned like this. But these are all ideas that you can kind of take and go further with if you want in your own project. So now that we have this all arranged, we can go ahead back to the, uh, actually let's minimize the materials uh, panel just so that's out of the way. We can actually close that out altogether. And if we go to the views panel, we can select a top view. And if we click on this button, that'll make it parallel projection. And we can save a scene like this as well. So we'll click the plus sign and we'll name this lumber. So we have assembled, exploded, and lumber. And of course you can see the, uh, the colors that we assigned to those components all got reflected on these copies as well. All right, so the last thing we're gonna do is create individual scenes for each unique component. And this is gonna be really handy out in the shop when we go to build this because we'll be able to use the SketchUp mobile app right on our phone and view every single part and piece as we cut it out. So in order to do this, we kind of have to take a step back and think about how, um, how we would go about isolating each unique part and piece. So I'm actually gonna turn uh, perspective mode back on. So we know we don't wanna see uh, the assembled or exploded layers, so we'll keep those turned off. But do we really wanna create a unique layer for every single component here? I mean, you might, you might wanna do that. Um, but I think an easier way is to use the hidden geometry feature in SketchUp to hide everything except for the single component that we want to see in the scene. Now there's only one problem with using hidden geometry in a scene. So if we look down at scenes and click this uh, drop down menu on any certain scene, you can see that scenes can retain hidden geometry in a scene. Um, but the problem is it will only remember the hidden state of highest of the highest level entities in the model. So if anything is nested inside of a group or component, this feature won't work. It only works on top level entities. So what that means is we just need to explode this group. So this group right now is assigned to the lumber layer. So if we explode it, now we have all of these entities um, still selected. We just need to make sure that these entities are on the lumber layer, which apparently they inherit the layer of whatever uh, group or component was exploded from, which is new to me. I, I th I'm pretty sure in the desktop version um, it will always keep whatever layer it was on before. Um, so that's good. We don't have to do anything. These are already on the lumber layer, so when we uh, hide the lumber layer, they will automatically be hidden. All right, now before we actually create the scenes for each individual component, let's go ahead and add the dimensions uh, to each board so we know uh, those are in place before we create the scene. So in order to do that, we're gonna do something a little bit controversial, and we're going to actually change the active layer to the dimensions layer. Now. Typically, you never want to change the active layer away from layer zero uh, because weird stuff can happen. You'll you'll end up things will end up sticking to each other, and you'll think things are hidden, but they're not. And it's just it gets really messy if you do that. There are a few exceptions for this rule, and this is one of those exceptions. We're making the dimensions layer the active layer, and what that'll do is make it so everything we create from this point forward will automatically be assigned to that layer. So for instance, I'm gonna zoom in and uh, double click on this component here, and we're gonna grab the dimension tool right here, and we'll just click and add dimension. So you just click at the anchor points to add the dimensions. So just go through the model and add whatever dimensions you need. So don't forget you need to grab the select tool to jump outside of 
the component before you go to the next one. All right, and you can see as well uh, that you can use the dimension tool by just clicking on the actual edge and it'll draw a dimension um, from that edge's endpoints automatically. All right, so since we had this as our active layer, we can, um, well, actually we need to bring this back to layer zero. So make your active layer layer zero now that we're done with the dimensions. And if we hide the dimensions layer, you can see that all the dimensions get hidden as well. Now you'll notice I'm not really worrying about the crown molding because I'm going to be measuring that um, in place, you know, once the cabinet is built. Um, but, you know, if you wanted to do that, you could. All right, so now that the dimensions are all created, let's go ahead and create a scene for each unique component. So actually, I just noticed this one is a little crooked. So let me correct that. All right, so the first thing that we want to do is we'll bring the lumber scene back to orient ourselves to a top view. And then what we want to do is hide all of these except for one. So in order to do that, we're going to select, uh, we're going to type control A. So that will select everything in the model. And then we'll do a shift click on the one we want to keep. So that'll deselect it and we can right click on the rest of these and click hide. So that just isolates this one um, component. Now we do want the dimensions visible, so we'll turn that layer on and then we'll just um, add the new scene. So we'll click the plus sign and we will add the new scene. I think this is the door panel and I can actually check that by selecting the component and sliding up to the entity info window and it is indeed the door panel. So now I'll just repeat this process for the rest of the components. So we go to the lumber scene, control A to select all, shift click to deselect the one we want, right click, hide, we'll zoom in, we'll turn on the dimensions layer, we'll double check the name of this component which is mirror, then we'll slide down, click the plus sign to create the new scene, and name that mirror. So one more time, so lumber scene, control A, shift click, right click, hide, zoom in, turn on dimensions, double check the name, back panel, and add the scene. So back panel, so the rest of these I will go through really quick. All right, so that's it for this video. We have all of these scenes created, uh, top view of all the different uh, lumber we need, and then individual scenes for every single part and piece to make this medicine cabinet. So in the next video, we're actually gonna go into the shop and I'm gonna show you how I use this model to help me build this medicine cabinet. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.